you just, I guess, you sitting back, putting your hands like that lets me know that we're, we're going, right? We're good? What do you think? I think... This is what I think. <laughs> Those are my thoughts. What are we? Hey. <laughs> hey, man. We've been doing this for weeks now. Yeah, literally. Definitely weeks. not only like four days of recording. <laughs> yeah, true. Hey, welcome back to the podcast, everybody. This is on thin ice. If you haven't been here before, but you found your way over to the YouTube channel, that is great. We are happy to have you here as our audience. Let's go. This is an awesome show. This is the only one, too. No one's ever thought of the ideas that we have before. We're totally original. This is a show where we bring titillating icebreakers to the table, maybe a little bit extra, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> just a little bit extra. It's just a little, nah, little bit, we, and we get to the... We never derail. We never derail. Nah. The whole, the whole point of this is to just to break the ice mm. with some awesome questions and stories and just introduce scenarios, and I'm rambling now. Honestly, so, though, with with that words. with that premise, though, like breaking the ice, if we do end up going off the rails and just bullshitting about stuff that's semi related to what we're talking about, technically we've broken the ice. We're still achieving what we came to do. That's very true. When things go off the rails, then you've when you've got a natural conversation flowing, that's when you know the ice has been broken. Yeah, and then we just reset the ice every at the beginning of each episode. We we just put the ice back so we can yeah. break it again. We here on On Thin Ice actually uh, have devoted all of our funding from GoFundMes and Patreon to this super sweet uh, machine that we have that actually regenerates the ice to come back uh, global warming. Damn, I was going to just go like the fucking ice bender route, just bending ice back into its place. No, that doesn't That doesn't work. This is real. We can throw money at problems and fix them in 2023. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if we don't learn anything anymore, you just you just put money in it. Yeah, that's true. There's a there's a podcast for that. <laughs> there is. So by this point, I mean we're supposed to have a lot more episodes at this point. I like to do a little bit of uh, not introduction shit. What's it called? A little bit of small talk. By the time this episode airs, it'll be like in December. We'll only be like two weeks out for, from Christmas, so. Right. Uh, you you got your Christmas shopping done yet? Christmas shopping. Here, <laughs> yeah, here in early. You got your Yule shopping done. Whatever you do here in. Bro, that November. Re- that requires money. I work for Jeffrey Bezos. <laughs> okay, you got your Christmas stealing done. Damn, I don't know. Nah, dude, I haven't done anything. I haven't done any Christmas shopping. If anybody, okay, here's the thing. If anybody gets any Christmas presents from me this year, it is going to be either handmade, like, yeah. that doesn't require me to buy anything because I am that broke, or I'm going to make them, like, a song or something. I'm going to release a whole ass album, and each oh, song man. is going to de- be dedicated to one of my friends or family. <laughs> and that'll just be the most heart heartfelt heartwarming thing that anybody's ever had done for them in, in my regard so I th- i'd say it's a win you know what i mean can it's I, a win either way can i put in a request for one of those songs where it's like what you did in your video where you said my music is shit and i'm terrible and then you tried to take it back <laughs> you said oh no he's okay actually <laughs> that's the beat drop or that's, yeah. the, that's the bass drop yeah, no, uh, I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Uh, I haven't done that, what? Yeah, go ahead. What What have you gotten your Christmas shopping done, if any? Oh, man, see this closet behind me with the, with the commander <laughs> decks on it? <laughs> That's where my wife's Christmas presents are hiding. Oh, She's... hiding. Okay, I got you, got you, got you. Yeah. She... I, was gonna, I thought you were oh, going to play something like, uh, see those magic cards over there? That's where my Christmas money has gone to or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. I can't buy the fucking commander decks. I tried. I thought the oh man, the post today that I saw on Facebook, they said the the store I was gonna go to, all the way Macomb, said on Saturday there was gonna be a forty percent off sale on all sealed stuff in the store. 
I was like, cool, if they have the commander decks, I'll call them ahead of time so I can drive down there and pick them all up for the newest set, Ixalan or whatever. There's probably 10 more sets that have come out by the time this episode airs. But they don't have the commander decks. They have everything else. And it's not even this Saturday. It's supposed to be next Saturday. And they had no indication of that. So Oof. no more spending for me for just a little bit. Oh, shit. Postpone. Speaking of magic, uh, Chelsea was cleaning up today. She was cleaning out the couch because we just it just needed to be done. Willow's hair gets everywhere. And uh, she calls me in the living room. She shows me this piece of paper right here. And I'm like, okay, what is that? And it's got a bunch of, like, magic, like, uh, titles on it. Like, it's got Theros and fucking uh, Dragons of Ark here and Eldritch Moon and Dragon's Maze. Like, it's got a bunch of different, like, magic titles on it or whatever. And the prices okay. for each one of them next to it. And I'm like, what the hell? Because it's not my handwriting. It's not my handwriting at all. Some of them are like oh. scratched out and shit. And I was like, what the fuck? Like, is, has this been in my couch since I was in Iowa? <laughs> and I, I sent a picture of it to Caden. I was like, hey, is this yours? And he's like, oh, yeah, I've been looking for that. <laughs> is he going to buy like yeah, he, dude, shit he, from those sets? Because that's expensive. He's already crossed out a bunch of them. Oh no. He's crossed out a bunch of them like he's already gotten them. These are probably some of the boosters that he got when he was here. When when they were helping us mm -hmm. move and stuff. So he was probably looking for some and just had them like written down just in case he forgot them or whatever. But yeah, I thought that was funny. <laughs> I will always kick myself because when I went to Germany for a little bit, the last day when we went to Nuremberg, there was this like game store or comic shop. I wasn't buying comics at the time, but I like going there I was specifically thinking like I want to buy some sort of German magic product and then I kind of realized yeah they're just the same cards in the in the US but they're in German it's not that important and I saw some sleeves in there I thought man I'll ponder on that cuz I'll definitely come back here and we didn't go back in that store so I didn't get any get bent. cool magic related shit from Germany sad days yeah I'm slowly culminating my wife's christmas presents i just keep finding stuff that i think she would enjoy so i put it all in a big old goodie bag later nice do it so god dude we have we have a podcast did you know that <laughs> isn't that wild it's news to me <laughs> uh anyway you got you got more no, dude, that's literally all. That, I've already gotten on Chelsea multiple times about bringing up Christmas in my presence. Oh. <laughs> like, I legit... Okay, hear me out, dude. I love Christmas. I love it. I love Christmas or Yule or whatever. I love the season. It's just a great feel-good time for me. I'm here for it, okay? Regardless of what anybody's preferences or dislikes about it are, I don't care. I love it. I love Christmas. It's like my second favorite holiday next to Halloween. But for fuck's sake, for the, for the holy gods of this earth, can we please just wait until after Thanksgiving? For fuck's sake, come on, man. No. We have to wait until after Thanksgiving, and then I'll be happy-go-lucky, jolly motherfucking Saint Nick all goddamn month. I don't care. But I don't want to. I don't want to put now. up a fucking Christmas tree. I don't want to put up Christmas lights and shit. I want to just let it simmer, man. We are there now. It's December when this is going up. People don't know this, but we're so far ahead of the game. No, I don't want to be ahead of the game. I want to just go with the game's pace, for fuck's sake. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. just let me live my spooky season until like the first or until the week of Thanksgiving, which is next week. And then after Thanksgiving, bro, I'll put on a goddamn Santa hat and go <laughs> Christmas caroling. I don't give a shit, but. There's a time and place. There's a time and place. Let it simmer. Just let it marinate. You know what I mean? I'm totally fine with all of December being Christmas. Yeah, but exactly. Let, let, no, let November happen. Yeah. Let all of October be Halloween, and let all of December be Christmas. But just give, give us a break in between. I mean, I don't know about all that. I, think, I still stand by my September to the week of Thanksgiving yeah. being super spooky season, but... I'm just a spooky guy, man. I don't give a fuck. I also just like the fall. I like the fall a lot, so. Yeah, we haven't had 
fall here at all. It's just been super hot days or super cold days. Dude. Because it's Midwest. We have had no snow, just Dude. cold and New England, hot. New England fall? <sighs> Peak. Straight up fucking mint. Dude, it is so good. The trees, the fucking rolling hills and stuff. Oh my god, it is fucking beautiful out here. And for the most part, for the most part, the weather's been pretty damn nice since the fall started. Um, we have gotten a couple of pretty chilly days recently. And we did have a couple of fucking summertime hiccups <laughs> that we don't need to talk about because, Jesus Christ, my ass was sweating, dude. But, anyway, moving on. Hey. So, check this out, man. All right. You ever, uh... No, that's stupid. I don't actually have a scenario for this one. <laughs> so, you're at the club with a girl that you're really interested in. No, that doesn't make sense either. Fuck it. Rewind. Hang on a minute. So, you're speed dating. You ever you ever actually been speed dating? Have I been speed dating? Yeah, have you ever done that? No. I don't think I haven't no. either. But based on what the movies tell me, I'm going to create something here. So you're, you're doing speed dating. The basic premise of it is that you're kind of, you're at a table and you're switching out partners every minute. Like you only get a right, minute right, right. to get to know each other. Okay. So then you move on to the next. And, I know what speed dating is. I just, I've never done it before. Yeah. And you're going to pick your best candidate and you've got to find the absolute best way to get as much information out about yourself in the most poetic way possible in the shortest amount of time. <laughs> oh god. Now let me share let me see if I, I'm gonna share my screen with you if that's alright. Okay. So tell me how this oh god, wait, what's happening? Okay, tell me how this how this looks on OBS or whatever. Are you seeing this this picture? Yeah, everybody's seeing it. <laughs> okay, so I go I go into Walmart and I go to look at the books for a bit and i see that and i made fun of this before i don't know do you remember back in like 2017 2018 when everybody that was an influencer had a book yeah yeah so what yeah. the fuck is this everybody everybody has one everyone's got a memoir mitt romney's on here Dude, why did why did mitt romney kind of look like uh fucking what's his face Ash from the Evil Dead, and that, oh, he really does. He kind of do be looking, <laughs> but little, just a little bit Bruce Campbell in that picture. <laughs> just look at these titles, and I want you to tell me. We're going to discuss today. What would the title of your memoir be, or the title of your biography? Would you go with something like "Making It So" like Patrick Stewart, <laughs> or "Worthy" by Jada Pinkett Smith? Uh, My F in Life by this person with long hair who I didn't get the uh, the author's name on that. Hmm. Interesting. I just... Yeah, this shit, this shit blows my mind. I can't believe that everybody has a book now. I know with... Uh, can I stop? I can stop streaming. Cool. There we go. So I know with uh, like the recent passing of uh, Matthew Perry, his memoir is probably going to go up in value a little bit. I don't know the guy from Friends. I guess he had like a drug and alcohol addiction. Yeah. That's and what I heard. died in his hot tub kind of yeah. unexpectedly. Could have been from complications from drugs and alcohol. Yeah, from what I heard he like he his, he had like a heart problem due to some kind of thing. I don't know and he like passed out in his hub his hot tub or whatever and then drowned basically from from what I heard, but mm. But I, the that's just off the internet. KGB. I don't know. But KGB got him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jesus I don't Christ. I don't know who's I don't know who to trust anymore when it comes to books cuz I feel like everyone's doing it for a cash grab and some of it is for attention and some of it is to bring real problems to light. I read Jeanette McCurdy's memoir I'm glad my mom died yeah, and I, I hope that I get that. to I hope I get to fucking teach that in class at one point because it was so amazing and moving when you're looking at the world of uh, child actors um, 
plays a little bit into religion, what fame and fortune does to kids, and what it means when your parents live uh, vicariously through their children. Right, right, right. I watched a few but videos all... on that one. Um, it's pretty intriguing. I, I had never read it, but... You got to. I've heard so good things. Good. I've heard good things about it. And I, I watched an interview when she uh, announced it, and the person doing the interview was like, whoa, like when she said the title of it, because she obviously wasn't expecting it and i don't think anybody was really but like no that's everyone's reaction especially when it's a, a yellow book with her dressed in all pink yeah and urn. yeah but i mean dude power to her man i mean I, i'm sure it's got some some crazy shit in there i i do need to check it out at some point um i never really got into reading biographies or memoirs or anything like that honestly i'm i'm a big fiction nerd so it just never was my cup of tea, but that one did stand out to me uh, a little bit more particularly because obviously I I grew up watching iCarly and uh, and all kinds of shit like that. So seeing that come out of one of the characters of iCarly, for example, was just like wild to me. But um, but yeah, I, I'm also familiar, fairly familiar with like the, the the child celebrity scene and like especially Nickelodeon. And, yeah, they're uh, rough. And what's his face? Um, the dude, the dude that's in the feet and shit. Um, the hell? I forget name? his name, but uh, they. Oh, and I can't remember what Jeanette calls him by something specific in the book. She doesn't name drop. She got the creator. She yeah. calls him the creator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's scary. That is terrifying. <laughs> that's not great. <laughs> that's not great. No. Yeah, he just tried to get as, as many feet shots as possible for Sam and Cat. Yeah. It, well, as well as a bunch of scenes in iCarly as well. They did the same thing. Yeah, they're like just a weirdo. in kiddie pools with shit in their feet way too often. Yeah, it's not great. Not a good look, bro. <laughs> not a good no. look at all. <laughs> it does not look great. No, 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 no. But uh, And you know what? As kids, we were all eating it up. We thought it was funny. We thought that feet were funny as children, you know? And, and they are, but... When, when you know, like, some of the context behind it, it's just becoming so gross and, like, damning and stuff. And I'm just like, what What am I even doing with my life? Why am I watching this now? Because now I feel dirty looking at this. And yeah, you, go from, you go from being 11 years old watching people stomping macaroni to being like, oh, that's gross, to being an adult and realizing that it was just because the person was super into feet. And you're like, oh, that's gross. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't change no 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 it's not great not a good look but uh yeah no I'll, I'll have to check it out sometime i like when i'm on my routes and stuff i can have headphones in and shit so listening to like audiobooks and stuff is is pretty cool to pass the time especially on them big ass be, routes but that would be a good one to listen to as well and i think she's even done a reading of it herself oh nice yeah i'll, I'll have to check that out so if we if we reminisce on everything you've accomplished in life, you know, do you have? Sheesh. Do you think you can summarize everything up into one good catching title for your own memoir? I think that if I were to summarize my biography or memoir or, or anything of that sort with one title, it would be into the pizza verse. <laughs> my life's work my life's work into the pizza verse nah I don't, i'm just kidding uh go watch the movie though if you haven't seen it um little plug <laughs> <laughs> the pizza verse yeah the pizza verse anyway uh damn that's a good one shit me myself and i <laughs> Like that hasn't been done. Me, before. myself, and I, the G Easy fan. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I think I might end up doing like a trivium reference from the band Trivium. I think I'd I'd title it like "Drowned Drowned and Torn Asunder." That's what I would call that my sounds, my biography. That sounds crazy. Bleak. <laughs> I'd read that. Drown and torn sounds asunder. Like yeah it sounds like a poem dude it, well it's a song so close but yeah it's a damn good song too <laughs> it's, a, it's a poem with instruments yeah exactly that's all it is but ah yeah i don't know i i 
honestly, Drowning Tortoise Thunder is pretty sick. I don't, I don't think that my accomplishments, though, at least what I consider accomplishments for myself and what I've gone through to get to where I am today are necessarily that bleak, you know? Like, I've had some down moments. I've had some really, really low moments, really low periods in my life that, like, I definitely won't be getting on, like, into on here uh, for, for obvious purposes. But, like, I, th I would say that I would want the title to be something a little bit more positive than... Uh, Drowning I, and torn asunder. Yeah, but honestly, though, the journey is, like, the, the fucking hardest part, you know what I mean? Like, getting there is the hardest part. I may have ended in a good place. Like, I'm, I'm in a good state now. I'm in, doing great, you know, mentally, physically, whatever. But getting there fucking sucked. It wasn't easy. It wasn't It wasn't just a hop, skip, and a jump down the road, you know? Like, it, it was a long, terrifying, fucking painful-ass fight to get there. And I'm still figuring shit out, you know? Like, I still have shit to, to do with my life, but... Drown and Torn Asunder is definitely an eye-catcher, especially if you got a picture of my face doing this on the cover or some shit like that. <laughs> you got a picture of you in a kiddie pool? <laughs> with my feet out. <laughs> <laughs> some Nickelodeon oh. producer's gonna pick that up and go, hey, we got a star here. <laughs> <laughs> Not my ugly-ass feet, ain't no way. Nah, dude, if I had a cover for it, though, it would be that profile picture I had on Facebook a while back, like, a couple summers ago, of me laying in that kiddie pool with a beer in my hand in my swimming suit. I didn't have a shirt on or anything, and Willow's just, like, standing over top of me, just looking happy as fuck. That's the cover of my biography right there. Drown in Taurus Under. The, I like the idea of just the pic any picture of you dressed as a wizard in front of it. <laughs> I know you got plenty. I got tons now. <laughs> yeah, you do. Dude, I keep getting people sending me those fucking AI generated wizard memes of like. Oh, the, they're so great. The wizard like throwing up in the fucking gas station or whatever. So it says like wizard uses acid breath or some shit like that. Yeah. I had a bunch of people send me that and say, hey, it's you. I'm like, bro, why do I gotta be puking? It wasn't me. But then there was this one, it was like a compilation of like a bunch of different scenes of wizards doing crazy shit, like fucking doing crazy skateboard tricks in the air at skate parts and shit, and like going to raves, and uh, some of them at like fast food chains, like just flooding the fucking kitchen with like buns and, and like patties and shit like that, just all over the floor and shit. And uh, yeah, no, I claim it. I claim all of it. I don't give a shit. I love every second of it. I cast ice on the fryer in the fry <laughs> oil. Oh, that's fucked. Reaction. I'd be a science wizard if I was any kind of wizard. Yeah. I would just figure out how chemical reactions work and I'd pass it off as magic. So like a like an alchemist? Yeah. Just alchemical fucking mixing up mutagens and drinking them like some Dr. Hyde shit. That'd be sweet. I would just be there playing with that, uh, that little gummy... Uh, can uh, what is it? The gummy bug kit that was in the toy section in the early two thousands. <laughs> Sitting there brewing shit up and then eating it. Hell yeah, dude! I had a, a mad man. This is like going way off the tr off rails, but you reminded me with the alchemy thing. I was playing D and D one time. Jesus, that just sounds terrible. But I was playing D and D, and I had this I had this uh, follower with my main character, or whatever. I had this guy that was like basically going under my wing as uh like a, a sidekick kind of thing right and i taught him um how to use alchemy and stuff like that and basically just let him do his own thing because in D D, pretty much if you could think it you could do it right and uh mm -hmm. i'm sorting through these fucking like crazy ass abilities that uh alchemists can do and shit and i wasn't gonna tell my dm at all until the day i got to use it but I found a fucking ability called, uh, it was like living, it was like living tumor or something like that. Oh no. So basically you, you, you concoct this shit and you pour it on part of your skin and it builds this tumor up on whatever part that you have dumped it on. And that tumor detaches itself and can, and can take the shape of any like small creature so you basically just have head crabs from Half-Life. No, I had a bird. 
but it was a oh. it was a fleshy bird like the one from Adventure Time where Magic Man inverts that bitch out yeah. and, like inside out. That's pretty much what <laughs> it that's what it looked like, and it couldn't fly or do anything because it didn't have any feathers. It was just this fleshy fucking bird thing, and it wasn't good for fucking anything. I literally only wanted to do it to freak out the rest of the party because I would I would have it go into people's rooms and shit while they were sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what they'd wake up like wake up to and shit my dm fucking hated me he wanted me out so bad imagine edgar Allan posed the raven but it's that flesh <laughs> bird <laughs> oh god no Some, something whatever at my bedroom chamber wrapping gently wrapping at my chamber door but instead of instead of like a tapping noise it's like a just a squelch yeah <laughs> yeah Ew. you go to you go to open the door and it's that and the dude is like already in a state of madness throughout the whole poem dude that'd be cool if i seen magic man or anybody just take a bird and just flick that bitch inside out i would throw up <laughs> i would throw up everywhere dude no way that'd be fucking weird that'd be some like watch, uncanny shit did you ever watch gravity falls no i never i never got into it god damn you're missing out but there's this uh that's what i keep like hearing favorite, but my favorite villain of all time is Bill Cipher. I've got him tattooed on my my back shoulder now, but he's like just this yellow one-eyed triangle with a top hat, and he's oh yeah, I've seen him before. Like untouchable, can go through realities and all this other shit. But when he first appears, he's he's talking to this other character, and he's like, "Hey, check this out! I got a gift for you." And he sticks out his hand, and he uh pops all the teeth out of this deer and hands them to the kid and he's like what the fuck are you and then he's like i'll relax and he just puts them right back <laughs> what the shit he does it's scary that is unhinged yeah that's almost as My unhinged favorite... as the fucking deer in adventure time he takes his fucking hooves off and just oh those two would be a Ooh. match like a fair match that's awesome but yeah my favorite line in that show is at the very end he's uh he's trying to chase off uh dipper and mabel the main characters and he and he's telling these uh, his other prisoners he's like i'll be right back i gotta go turn these kids into corpses <laughs> <laughs> this is on disney xd this is back when disney was good hell yeah that's what i like to hear <laughs> i gotta turn these kids into corpses <laughs> <laughs> yeah damn that's just not Wild. right man that's just not right I don't know that I have a good title for my own memoir. Small gonna... man, smaller peen. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Stop. Because I've got too many personalities. <laughs> and... <laughs> well, that's good. I've tried to do too many things, and I've I've lived a life of just being shamed for being short and all that other whatever else. Um. I don't know, something along the lines of uh, maybe not owing your parents anything. I've always liked that idea, that you don't yeah. owe your parents anything. No, I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel that. Just because I, I have a strenuous relationship with mine, but... I feel oh, you. Oh, man. I'd have to, th I'd have to think. <laughs> that, was, I wouldn't... that was the whole question, man. Think. <laughs> Yeah, I know. I, uh, I I brought this, and I probably should have had something prepped in the chamber ready to go. Probably. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what I would... You know, I'm usually good with titles, too. I love alliteration and making sense of words, but I also wouldn't want something that's just dumb, like a single word, something that says courage or, like... <laughs> I've come this far. Something really lame no, like that. I call wouldn't it, want. Call it courage, but have the have the the cover of it be like a morphed, like a, like an anamorphed version of your face with courage, the cowardly dog, like a halfway that would be point. Beautiful. That'd be great. Just a hyper realistic version of him. Yeah, but like halfway through the anamorph se sequence, like it's like right in the middle. So you're transforming into courage, but it's just like stuck. <laughs> what if I had one of those? Uh, the slip covers, I like slip hollow covers to where like you angle it one way and in <laughs> yeah. my case you angle it the other. It's <laughs> cover the dog. <laughs> That'd be sick. That'd be awesome, dude. I would just, so be here for that. 
it's just my whole point of view, but I'm talking about like Muriel the whole time and what <laughs> I would do as courage. <laughs> oh Jesus. It's just a whole role playing book. Dude, I had somebody speaking of courage, I don't know why this keeps getting brought up in my life, but I had I had some, and this is a this is a fuck Mary kill, so maybe I should wait for that episode before we talk about it. Yeah, you know what, I'm just gonna... Just remind me when we do the Fuck, Mary Kill episode. I'll bring this one up because somebody asked me recently something and uh, <laughs> I would like to know your answers. <laughs> I would love to be able to answer these. Yeah, no, I Obviously, got you. I'm so good at questions. <laughs> not answering them, I'm just good at questions. I'm good at asking questions. <laughs> I never said anything about being good at answering questions. Yeah. Hmm. But, maybe, uh, anyway. <laughs> maybe something like Too Much All at Once. That'd be a decent title, I think, for just kind of capturing what's going on in my world. I'm always trying to do a bunch of different things, and it's always overly stressing me out, and I, I create my own problems all the time. Felt that. I'm really good at that. Even Big felt that. Even earlier today, like, I can't do all this free time i guess i don't have free time but like i'm on thanksgiving break as of this recording so i've got until n like next monday before i have to go back to class and i've got sticky notes all over my cabinet of work i have to do but i with this extra time i'm like man i can just i can just put it off i can't <laughs> but I, I totally feel like i could anytime i have free time i feel like i need to be occupying myself with something Dude. And now I'm turning red and orange, and it's the light, and it's awful. I f I'm fucking felt that. Not the red and orange light, but the always, <laughs> like, if I have any moment of free time whatsoever, I feel like I'm wasting my time. Yep. Like, I feel like I'm wasting my time. I was actually talking to somebody recently about this, about how I have this really bad habit of getting in my head about not being enough or not doing enough in life. But then I, I sit back and I realize, bro, I'm like... I've got a decent job. I've got awesome friends. I'm I'm working on music. I'm I get these creative bursts where I'm constantly making stuff and like just putting stuff into the world that's creative and trying to be as positive as possible. I'm starting podcasts with my friends that I was like in my head worried about losing contact with after I moved and shit, but this is a perfect way to not do that, you know? Like there's a, b a bunch of positive things that I do in life all the time, but I still sit here sometimes. If I've got, like, 10 extra minutes and I'm sitting there watching TV, I'm like, I could be doing something right now. I could be productive right now, but I'm not doing a fucking thing. And then, it, it like, it sits in me like I'm just, like, not enough or I'm not doing enough or whatever. But I'm like, you're a fucking idiot. You're doing plenty, man. Some days you're doing too much. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you just need to take a step back and chill for a little bit, but... But yeah, I've no, absolutely I feel that. felt that. I do that whenever we're uh, just watching TV late at night in the bedroom. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll be sitting in my chair and like unless we're watch if we're watching this, the TV together, it feels different because then it feels like a group activity. Right. But right, right. if my wife goes and like pulls out her phone to play Pokemon Go or whatever, and I'm just sitting there, that's when my brain is like, you've got to you have reading to do, you have homework, go do that. Yeah. I don't I don't give myself the break or the time. Uh if I if I wheel over to my other desk and I go and start building a magic deck, I'm like, no, wait, I'm not actually gonna play this. I need to put this down and do something productive. Yeah. I felt that. The same I... argument comes up with video games a lot too, where where people will argue like video games are an absolute waste of time and granted, in a weird way they are, but like you need that that break and the gratification. Yeah. Otherwise yeah. it's what's it worth living for what's the what does the work matter when you're not getting any pleasure right and there's also an argument to be made about people that do that for a living too i mean people play games for a living and it obviously is relevant to them you know it's relevant to somebody games are not just a waste entirely i, I see what you're saying like i get it especially for people like us that don't do video games for a living we don't play video games for a living but at the same time i agree like there are points in your life where you just gotta like sit down, shut the fuck up, and drop a fucking 30 bomb on Warzone because why? <laughs> I mean, why not? You know what I mean? Or smash some kids at fucking Fortnite because you're better than them. 
or whatever you know like whatever game floats your boat build a giant castle in minecraft who the fuck cares just whatever mindless activity brings you joy or some kind of happiness or relaxation at the very least whether it be a video game or like i have comfort movies that i'll put on in the background of just just, uh, half the time i'm not even watching them i'm just i just it feels good that that movie is on and that's it you know and it just feels good to me so i i accept that as something that just needs to happen at some point for a little while and just gotta do what you gotta do man yeah i've actually started letting that unhealthy habit get into my new hobby of movies already because i i'm collecting movies now and the quality that i want them in so when i'm watching i have a list of like the most some of the most iconic movies that everyone references all the time stuff like uh like green mile or uh oh god some other ones i haven't seen how the first halloween yet uh silence of the lambs fault in our stars stuff like that that has a lot of cultural capital right and and everyone uh, yeah people have made a thousand different references to them i'm trying to watch all those so that i can have a better understanding of the world and all these cool references and if i find myself wanting to re-watch one of those because it was so good i guilt myself because i'm like no you have others to watch yeah. you've already seen it you have the knowledge you can't go back yet yeah i feel that i, I i've been meaning to put I, i've been meaning to watch a bunch of movies that i just keep on putting down because i i don't know i'm either making a video or working on a song or some shit or i'll take willow out on a long walk or whatever and then i get back home and either the girls are watching something at that point or i just don't feel like watching it and i'm like bro i need to watch this so i know what the fuck people are talking about like really bad mainly the terrifier movies have been the ones that i've been like putting off like a lot because they're just getting fucking huge dude everybody and their mom is talking about terrifier right now in the horror community and i'm like man i gotta know i gotta know what the fuck the hype is all about and it doesn't help that the girls don't want to watch those (laughs) Like, they don't mind watching horror movies, but they're drawing the line at Terrifier. They're like, nah, not doing it. (laughs) That's a clown, right? Yeah, Art the Clown. The black and white uh, paint, yeah. Apparently they're pretty fucked. But, like, I don't know, I gotta gotta understand. I gotta understand what makes Art so terrifying. Why is he... Why is he so menacing, and what what kind of fucked up debauchery is he committing on these movies? You know what I mean. But yeah, I've only ever seen like a couple clips. I think something when he was in a convenience store and he was like buying murder tools. And yeah. He just didn't say a single <laughs> word and walked out. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. Honestly, I I want to watch him here soon. Probably this week because my job screwed me over on my schedule. So I've got like three days off in a row and i'm it's been getting pretty chilly outside so i'm more than likely gonna have that time to just kind of chill out and uh before thanksgiving of course because we have people coming over for thanksgiving but uh or sorry the the food day uh yeah we've renamed it now yeah also that just puts a time stamp on when we're recording this because this is gonna come out like december (laughs) yeah food day is gonna be done and over with but (laughs) It's going to be, yeah, two weeks after. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, so, Drowned and Torn Asunder with a big ol' smiley face, me on the cover of it. And what did you say yours was? I I think it would be uh, Too Many Things All at Once. Too Many Things All at Once. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, or Too Much All at Once like that i like too many things all at once i think that sounds cool i think it gives me oh dude that reminds me of that movie that uh i won a ton of awards i watched it i can't remember everything that. everywhere yeah, yeah, yeah. all at once or at the same i forget what that everything was. everywhere all at once dude that movie was so good i loved every i didn't second see of it. it but i i wanted to i was about to pick it up out of the movie bin and then i read the back of it and i was like this is not my genre no dude watch it <laughs> watch it it is unhinged just complete and total crackhead energy the whole way through and it is so good i loved every second of it i didn't dude i didn't think i was gonna like it either like i dead ass did not think i was gonna like it and i could not take my eyes off of it everything about it just had my brain rapid firing at all angles like i was like wait a minute 
what does that mean? Or, oh, fuck, that's like, that's some weird, like, alternate reality version of that thing. What the fuck is going on? Dude, the whole thing was just blowing my mind left and right. I loved it. It was right, fun. I will, I will check it out then. Yeah, no, it, it's super fun. Also, dude, the cast, bro, they killed it on the cast, dude. They killed it. Everybody was at their their A game. It was just phenomenal. I, I thought it was really good. I need to watch that again, honestly. But but anyway, what's your cover going to look like? My cover? Oh, man, I've been really like making sure that I'm my face isn't on anything. Yeah? <laughs> I don't know. I think I would try to grab either like a bunch of my collectibles and maybe my school textbooks i would i would grab just a hodgepodge of all of the shit that i do and have going on or some sim something that symbolizes all of it and i would gather it in just a corner and make it look like a hoarder's dream and, and probably take a picture of that and you know have the text be on there you know be really cool was you get a fucking mm. get a pop figure of yourself and just put it on like a solid white cover. Something really simplistic just like simplistic that. Simplistic as fuck. It's a pop figure of you. It's like it's got your tattoos and shit that like can like you can easily recognize that it's you. But on like a solid white or black backdrop with like some simple like papyrus text. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be funny as hell. I'd love it. Dude, that'd be great. I want to get a pop figure of me. I don't know why. I don't even fucking like pops all that much, but I want to get one of me so bad. I consider it, but like, I don't know. The pops that I like are from from things that I like, and I hate myself. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Not that narcissistic that I need a pop of myself. It'd be kind of cool. I would get I think one. It'd be of fun, like, dude. I think it'd be fun. Not narcissistic, I, just it'd be cool, like a cool thing to have. I don't know. I would have said that I, w I would get one of like my, my Bonnie character, but that exists, and I have two of them. Yikes. <laughs> like specifically yours with the hoodie and the fucking red tie and everything? No, I don't have that, but See, that would be, that'd that, be nice. That'd yeah. be lit. Bonnie, Bonnie with, the, with the gray hoodie. Bonnie with the hoodie. I'd like to get a Scarecrow one, or a Rustbeard one. That'd be sick, too. Yeah. That'd be sick AF. I've got a Cthulhu. Make it happen. Well, I don't know if it's a pop figure, but it's a well, glow-in-the-dark Cthulhu. That's kind of cute. All we need is it holding a slice of pizza, and we have a, we have a fucking cosmic pizza pop figure. We have a mascot. Yeah. I still have that we have a... plushie somewhere that has the little pizza slice chilling somewhere i don't know where the fuck he's at but the class pet yeah <laughs> jesus are there any like specific elements you'd want to have in your memoir like something that really defines who you are um i probably like as far as like just general topic matter i i would just I, I don't want to sugarcoat things, you know? Like, I, I don't want people to get the, the idea that things are well all the time because it's just a lie, you know? I, I, I would want it to be structured in a way that just shows, like, if you have... Even if you have the most normal life ever, you're going to have your face drug through the fucking mud a couple times, you know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's not just a, a simple... I think I'm going to get fixed today, you know? And you're just well all of a sudden no you just you gotta fucking eat shit sometimes and uh i think a lot of people see me now like in my current state that didn't know me when i, when I was getting to this point and they think that i just have it all figured out and shit which is f so far away from true but a lot of people that i have currently in my life with with the exception of maybe my sister you know don't know where the fuck I came from and they don't know who I was before they don't know what kind of bullshit I dealt with or like how terrible of a human I was at one point or another just sometimes it sucks you know but you just gotta fucking figure it out and I would want that to be a pretty big focus 
just because I, I don't like when people just make it seem like it's some easy thing, you know, or that, yeah, or that no, one day I... you just, you just figure it out. No, that's not the case. You just, you're always figuring it out, you know? Yes. Yeah. I, man, dude, my, uh, my first impression of you was so bad. Yeah. And like, I would have had no idea that I, I hardly know you now, but like <laughs> the things I know now compared to then, literally you like showed up at my Walmart <laughs> And I'm like, who's this? Who's this greasy bearded fellow that's always on his fucking phone? Like, what a dick! <laughs> man, if didn't, only if only you had stayed point, on the team long enough for me to be your boss, man, that would have been great. <laughs> didn't know that that uh, that dick at one point was living in his car trying to teach preschoolers or kindergartners. Yeah, nah, dude. I uh, <laughs> I'm a lot on surface level, all right, but. <laughs> There's so much more. You have no idea. Yeah, that's it's how a lot of people are. I used to like be really arrogant and prideful that I could I could I th- figure people out really quickly. I thought you were an boy, asshole howdy, the first time I, I met you. Everyone does. So that's yeah. my first impression that I give everyone. I legit my thought RBF you were an asshole. And, <laughs> yeah, with my with my face and and whatever. Maya was saying the same thing because we we talked about our first impressions of each other. Yeah, and how she was like she knew she somehow knew i was in the military just by the way i sat in my chair she's like i thought you were a conservative fucking uh just absolute dickhead yeah and then like i made a joke and i smiled and i laughed and it it just changed oh maybe he does have emotions maybe this kid feels something (laughs) and i was like no nolan void not quite sorry sorry to burst your fucking bubble but no feelings behind these eyes <laughs> no thoughts yeah it just takes some time to get to to know me figure me out people at uh the new store i'm working at are the same way where they just can't tell if i'm joking or not and i have to be blatantly honest with them and be like no i can be really out of pocket but like i don't know you yet so i'm not talking yeah no i feel you i feel you i i mean i I'm the same way. I have a pretty bad resting bitch face if I'm not, like, actively talking to somebody. I smile a lot when I am talking to people, and usually that's the icebreaker right there. I'll, I'll open up and start fucking grinning from ear to ear most of the time, but, like, uh, if I'm just walking around, dude, I had tons of people at Walmart thinking that I was just douche canoe because I, lo- I just looked pissed all the time. And a lot of the time I was, but it wasn't because of anything that they did. You know, it was just the... the, the the stress of being at a job like that in the position I was in was not great, you know? So, but no, I get it. I get it. And I think for you, especially you do have quite a dry, like overtone of your humor when you, when you start to talk to you or when I, when yeah. I started to talk to you or whatever. So Yo. a lot of the time it didn't come off as jokes and I was just like, Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, that's, that's difficult because I always try to be like a chameleon when it comes to humor and I only yeah. use humor to communicate with people because it works on a certain level yeah. so I gotta I gotta find that that safe place to be where I can push the boundary a little bit with this person but right. still recover and get out of there without looking like a total dick and then we eat a 2400 calorie ration bar on yeah. camera with each other <laughs> like it was nothing <laughs> we sure did I just, I just showed up one day in my ramen shirt and we ate a 2400 calorie ration bar as complete yeah. strangers <laughs> has toby told you how how like my first impression on him i guess his first impression of me was maybe maybe at some point he might have like told our, me, but... our our earliest interaction was like him in the him and i meeting in the bathroom and i oh, came in decked thing? out and all this yeah yeah all yeah, this yeah christmas yeah. shit yeah yeah so i was I was wearing like these light up necklaces. Yeah. I had these fingerless gloves on until he dressed up. I just come into the bathroom while he's washing his hands. I'm like, dude, you gotta go to the main office right now. Dude, no, 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 no. You said, you said, bro, you gotta go to personnel right now. And it was oh, just, yeah. it was just like a sense of urgency in your voice, is what he was saying. He said that it was like the most urgent he had ever heard you before in his life. So he was like, he was observing what he was seeing with all this fucking Christmas glory all over you. Barely ever spoke to you at all. And that was what came out of your mouth in the bathroom while he was pissing. Yep. So he was just like 
D- dude, he lost it. I remember I remember when he did tell me that uh dude, I was cackling like a fucking witch. I'm not kidding. I was dying and I wish I could have been a fly on the wall cuz that would have been beautiful. My favorite time was when I came into the bathroom and he was at the urinal and <laughs> Like I just walked in on my said, Hey, you gonna save some of that for me? <laughs> that was the, that was the end of that. Oh Lord Jesus. God, the things that happen yeah. to the Walmart I, bathroom. I can't grow, but I grow on people, you know. Oh word. <laughs> like a fungus. Hell yeah. Like an S T D. Oh no. <laughs> Yes. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, that's so beautiful. Oh, man. I think yeah. my title is pretty I'm... solid for I like what it. I'm working with. I like it. I think it's pretty solid. Now we're going to have some mock-ups of these made. We need to make some of these. <laughs> yeah. We need to mock you up gonna... your fucking... Uh your autobiography we need to do that for the thumbnail or something of this oh that'd be sick <laughs> just do it side I'll, by uh, sides yeah i'll put i'll put some shit together later and maybe do that instead of all this homework yeah do it be Dude, a fun little project fucking send me send me a picture of whatever you got like in that regard and i'll i'll photoshop the shit out of it on a book and everything i'll even get some like books or whatever to put them on to make it look like they're legit books That'd be great. Probably tell some war stories in my memoir. I've got plenty of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know about war stories, but I definitely got some fight stories that would definitely I be think... going in my memoir. Would you have you read the um, Percy Jackson series? No. <clears throat> okay, so the I haven't either, but I've read some of the first book chapter titles are all super fucking stupid and unhinged and have nothing to do with the book so it i i totally couldn't get past it as a kid but like one of the chapters is i shared a cheeseburger with zeus or poseidon something like that i mean i was like weird flex but okay not interested i'm out sorry (laughs) i mean as much as i would love to do that uh... sorry sharks i'm out (laughs) but would you uh would you have anything like that for your your chapter titles? Just totally clickbait, misleading stuff. They, I think all my chapter titles would have some kind of re- relevance to what they're talking about in the chapter, but I would still want them to be as unhinged as possible. Like if if there's a chapter about like my life at in retail or something, I'd want it to be something pertaining to my life in retail, but just completely fucking left field, like. Um, the title of the the chapter would be like the time I saw a man shit himself in a Walmart aisle or something like that. You know, like it's relevant because I've seen it. It is a thing that happened and I'd probably talk about it in my memoir, but is that really what my life at retail was? No, not really, but. <laughs> Equate brand employee. <laughs> Prom- my, my life at Walmart promoted to customer. <laughs> I love those memes. Congrats, yeah. you've been promoted to customer. Yeah, and I literally was too, which is great. They fired my ass. <laughs> um, Wait, they really fire you? Oh yeah, they did. Yeah, didn't they? They fired me because of my time clocks. Like we're not like going through, even though I fought it. I even called. Uh, I called ethics and everything, and ethics was pretty much like, oh well, your manager said that you weren't clocking out, and I was like yeah that's why i'm calling you because that's not true and they were like well your manager said it says in this email that we got from them that you weren't clocking out and i was like yeah that's why i'm calling you because it's not true well there's nothing we can do about it sorry your manager said this (laughs) and they fucking hung up on me i'm like Okay, that well, sucks. I guess I'll go fuck myself then. What's the point of even having ethics if they're not going to help you? Like, at all. Ethics needs to call ethics to find out if something's ethically correct or not. <laughs> yeah. We need a department called ethics and a par- department called morals to, to get shit straightened out. <laughs> we need a, an ethics and an ethical ethics. 
<laughs> we need like we have here where we have the three different branches that keep each other in check. Yeah, checks and balances. That's what my that's what my retail chapter would be called. Ethical ethics. Checks and balance. Oh, I thought you were gonna say checks and balances. <laughs> I mean, that would be fun, too, honestly. <laughs> checks and balances and bounced checks. <laughs> yeah, because what are they paying me, bro? Not a goddamn thing. No, I'm just kidding. I got pretty decent money from Walmart, but at the same time, ethical ethics? Come on, now. That's Bars. where it is. Bars. Is my... My laptop isn't charging. What is happening? Well, did you try to plug it in? Yeah, I tried that. Oh, well, I'll deal with it later. Yeah. What about you? What are your man. titles looking like? Your chapter titles? Oh, man. I Got Hit With a Bullet is one of my favorite <laughs> stories to tell. So I probably have something like that in at least one chapter. I was expecting something like just straight up chapter one. Maybe. That's it. There's no like subtext. In the anything. beginning. Just, just chapter one. <laughs> and then the next one would be chapter two or put all the chapters out of order <laughs> oh my god that'd be so awesome like your like your fourth chapter is chapter 67 or something like that <laughs> yeah i have a chapter on every page <laughs> next to the page it number just, it just says chapter next to the page number <laughs> i just have a really short story for every chapter or <laughs> I could do like how every textbook begins with Roman numerals and then it gets into page numbers. I don't start the page numbers until I get to like my the very end, the epilogue or something. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the most confusing, annoying thing for anyone trying to read. Oh, they have no idea where they're at. That's another thing I would do too. All my page numbers would be out of order. I would not have my page numbers in any particular order whatsoever. They'd be randomized. Oh. So you could be on page 10, but it says page 364 or some shit like that. And just just completely random order. No particular order whatsoever. Or I'd put I'd make it into like some kind of cipher or some shit that has a hidden message if you can figure it out. <laughs> the order of the page numbers. That'd be lit, honestly. That'd be kind of sick. I had this idea for an album. I have the artwork for it, but I don't have it any songs made for it but i was gonna do something like really stupid that's called like memoirs of a fnaf kid or something like that <laughs> so i could i could do that for a chapter hell yeah i'll be here for it that's awesome even though i'm not truly a fnaf kid because i fell off after sister location or whatever i haven't played any of them i played like maybe five minutes of it one time and then i watched a bunch of like playthroughs and stuff of Cory Kenshin and Markiplier and PewDiePie and shit and that was about it and then after I seen the movie I went home and watched like a bunch of lore videos because I was just like I need to know what the fuck is going on I, I'm no, so lost don't. and watching the lore videos I was even more lost <laughs> I was yeah. like what the fuck is going on dude this is some zombies chronicle level of fucking like all over the goddamn place no Markiplier sex post credit scene, I'm out. <laughs> hey, we got a Corey Kenshin post credit scene. That's all I cared about, dude. I was fucking I pumped about it. I didn't even know who that guy was. Oh, dude, I love Corey. Dude. I'd imagine a lot of people love him if dude, he made it into the FNAF movie. Go watch any, any of Corey Kenshin's Spooky Scary Sundays any of them doesn't matter he's got tons of them just go on cory kenshin's youtube channel and watch any of his spooky scary sundays they are fucking hilarious but also the submissions that he gets for those videos are terrifying like some of them are fucking scary as shit but uh basically he just he watches like uh fan submissions of like uh short films or um short animations and stuff that are scary obviously and uh, he reacts to him pretty much, but dude, he is funny as fuck. I, honestly, any of his videos are great, but go watch some Spooky Scary Sunday. And, ah, oh, dude, I love it. I love it so much. It's so good. I'm going to procrastinate it. Don't do it. I'm, I'm going to send you it. I'm going to send you one right after this. Watch it. <laughs> I'll just block you. Don't do it. <laughs> just watch <laughs> it. It's so good, man. He's funny as hell, dude. He's so funny. 
but nah, like Five, Five Nights at Freddy's is what like made his channel pop off. That's that's why they they offered it to him. Like that was the that was the game he was playing that made his channel fucking skyrocket and shit. I think at the time Markiplier was already pretty big, and so was PewDiePie and and all that kind of stuff. So it's probably why they didn't reach out to them, unless they did and they were just busy. I, I could see that happening because I know like we were talking about Markiplier's doing his own movie and shit. And yeah, I think him working on Iron Lung was the reason why he probably wasn't in the movie. Yeah. A big missed opportunity though they could have definitely tried to work something out with him but um because even Corey's part was pretty small but i loved it dude i fucking thought i thought it was funny as shit <laughs> and then his reaction to the trailer dropping even though he already knew that he was going to be in it he was trying to play it off like he had no fucking idea what was going on <laughs> until he pops up in the trailer and then he, he starts fucking busted out laughing because he knew the whole time dude it's so funny but He's good stuff, when man. You, I love Corey. When do you think they're gonna pull us in to do a to do a cameo in a movie? Um, now that we're big and famous, probably when either Kang Dynasty or Secret Wars comes out, they'll probably have us jump in on that because they're gonna have everybody. They're gonna have everybody, so they might as well have us too. They will, yeah. Disney, if you're seeing this, which I know you are, because everybody's seeing this. Hit us up. Hit us up for Secret War. Come on. Like, come on. It's your move. I'll direct. I'll write for it. I will I'll, not act in a, I'll in act a in Disney it. Marvel movie. I'll be in a random spot somewhere on the corner of the screen. I don't give a shit. That'd be funny as hell if I could just make a random ass cameo like that. <laughs> You'll be the guy that comes in in Wakanda Forever, the, the um, officer, whatever, that goes, oh shit, you got an Iron Man suit. <laughs> That'll be your one line. <laughs> nah, I'm just I gonna. That. I'm just gonna be in the back somewhere, chewing on like a brick of vibranium or something like that. I'm just gonna be eating a brick of vibranium in the back of some random cavern in Wakanda. <laughs> Why? I don't know. Could, That's just where I'm at. That's my place in life. <laughs> we could. Uh, we could hit up Zack Snyder or. Uh, uh who else is who's the other big guy in the the dc universe right now why am i forgetting his name i don't know i think the dude like totally took over i don't keep, uh, i don't on, keep up with dcu well he worked on uh guardians of the galaxy i can't think of his oh name. james gunn yeah we could uh we could get with james gunn and see if we could cast you as weasel for that movie that we know it's coming out <laughs> Dude, if I you ended up making it to a rat. if I if I end up making it to a DC movie before a Marvel movie, there's something wrong. There's something wrong, dude. I've got such a bleak, terrible outlook on the DCU. I just fuck me, dude. That would be awful. <laughs> That's what your memoir could be. It's just dedicated to hating on movies. No, actually, uh. Derek and I's podcast. We're gonna be touching up on that. <laughs> oh, okay. You're gonna plug that here, huh? Yeah. Well, not really, because we don't really have anything live yet. But <laughs> do you think it'll be up by the time this one comes out? I would hope so. I would fucking hope so. Because I know we're three, three weeks. We're supposed to be doing a Five Nights at Freddy's one for episode one because it's, it's what well, everyone's talking about it right now. So we figured we'd throw our two cents in, but. He hasn't gotten back to me, so... Everything's ready to go, though. YouTube channel's up. Everything's ready to just start going. But for whatever reason, we just haven't started yet. Maybe you sometime this week. We'll see. I couldn't do two of these. It's gonna be it's gonna be rough, not gonna lie. But uh, I think if we can record a f like quite a bit of episodes in advance or whatever, I'll be alright, because then I could just, like... Nah, I don't want to record this week, but it's okay, because we have three weeks' worth of shit already ready to go and so forth you know what i mean yeah but anyway i think we're about wrapped up because we're hitting the we're a little over the hour mark and my food's almost here and uh, i wish i had some food i'm getting hungry myself go get some food man i just i just door dashed some shake shack because i got some bomb ass burgers shake shack i've heard about that dude shake shack's good i personally like shake shack i don't know how pe the, like the locals feel about it Maybe it's one of those things that the locals are like, yeah, that's garbage. Why the fuck do you like that? But as somebody that's been living in the Midwest for like seven or eight years, <laughs> I, 
I think it's pretty damn good for like a uh, fast-ish fast food chain kind of thing but yeah because all we got here is fucking dairy queen yikes yeah yikes subpar yeah. uh we uh we plug in we plug in the podcast yeah uh if if you are enjoying this make sure to like and subscribe to the channel all that good stuff and then make sure to check us out on instagram Check it out. That's Check us. Out Instagram pod underscore on thin ice. And we'll also hey, have that stuff linked it. in the uh, description of this video, as well as pretty much all the other ones. Matter of fact, I think I'm going to go ahead and add a link to our banner. I think you can link that kind of stuff to your banner as well. Cool. cool. In, in, the, in the about section. I'll go look at that later. Or maybe while I'm eating, I'll, I'll fuck with that. But yeah, thanks for coming. If you came, make sure you share this with your friends and family and all that good stuff if you came clean up after yourself <laughs> <laughs> i'm so sorry why is it always come jokes with you <laughs> dude never fails well it's about to fail now i'm stopping the recording <laughs>